Hello friends, it's Sherry from Turquoise Dreaming. How are you doing today? Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me. I'm here to work on the next uh, tag for Ann Brooks Challenge 52 Tags Handmade. So uh, here's what I've done so far and I thought maybe they're, they're actually going pretty quick for the way I'm doing it. So I thought I'd show you and maybe we'd make one together. But uh, this week was all about the buttons. Buttons. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool to use buttons, and she sh and showed different ways to sew the buttons on. So a good example of that is this one right here. It's a you know it's a small tag. Here's the size of my tag, and uh, the base is a vintage piece of a vintage sheet, and that's also what I used for the little topper here. And then the thing about sewing the the uh, buttons on in different ways was like here's like a regular way you sew a button on and then she showed how you can sew to the outside like instead of just going through the holes sew your thread to the outside and you know do different things like that so I did that one with two holes I thought that was cool so then I tried one with four holes and that's you know the threads going to the outside and then you you know you kind of sew under your fabric and then there you go so um yeah and how, how i've been doing them is sewing you know on my fabric or whatever i'm making my tag out of it and then i'm done with it and i sew glue it onto my tag so i don't have to sew through my tag so i did that one and i added a little piece of doily here and another little button right there so that was one and then so the other two are right here this is that same vintage sheet fabric on this one and this one I used two uh, buttons, uh, bigger ones. I wanted to try, see how these are smaller. I wanted to try using some bigger buttons. So these are all from my vintage button jar, which I have right here. These both had four button, four holes in the buttons. So this one I made, uh, I put it this way so, the cro so it's like cross this way. And this one I put, you know, tilted the four buttons so that the cross went like an X. So this one's a cross and this one's an X. I thought, I thought that's another way to, you know, decide how you want your, and I used pink thread so that they would, or this is actually embroidery thought floss. So um, that's another way to uh, do sew buttons on with embroidery floss. And also doing it with embroidery floss made it nice and sturdy, you know, because you have all those threads in one piece of embroidery thought floss. So all I did was go through once and it, you know, it was sewn on nice and sturdy and I felt like it was anyway and uh, you know so that made it go faster and here's my third one again I tried I wanted to try this other vintage sheet I had it's a little bit uh, lighter uh, as far as the colors I want because I had some white buttons I kept on pulling out white buttons apparently I have a lot of white buttons and <laughs> the white buttons didn't look good on this fabric here because you can see it has a little bit of a creamy color background so I pulled out this vintage sheet and this one has a white background with the lighter pastels and so I did some white buttons on here and I pulled out two uh, bigger buttons with two holes and so you know to try to stay with Anne's you know looking at different ways to sew buttons on I just tilted this one this way so it went up and down and then I turned this one so it went across you know no big deal but uh, and I had a little pretty piece of little, this is some kind of like seam binding or something here that really matches this pink nicely. And then I put a piece of little baby rickrack here on the side of that one. So those three are pretty much done. So let's see if we can do one together. This is that same vintage sheet with the white background. And all I've been doing is just tearing the pieces. So I just kind of, um, you know, line it up here with my tags. These I punched out with the paper punch that I have. And uh, then I just line the fabric up here and I make a little cut. Let me turn it over so I can make sure I can see where I'm cutting and I wanna cut my tag. And then I'm just ripping it. I like the, the uh, you know, frayed, torn look on fabric when you're making certain things. So I'm just tearing this these pieces and so that's let's see where to go you do have to pull your strings off so and then I'm going to tear the bottom too to get the little rectangle to sew on here that we're you know like our base that we're starting with so uh, this is a pretty easy way of doing it um, I like 
Anne's tag where she sewed on all, you know, she sewed on a lot of buttons. And I think her tag was a little bit bigger than mine. But uh, I really love her tag. And I was going to do it that way. And I thought, the thought of uh, button, button cards popped into my head. But um, I didn't really, you know, find a way to actually do a button card. I mean, this is kind of like a button card, but but more of a tag. <laughs> so I was thinking button card in tag form kind of when I did these. So that's why I only put like two or three buttons. And, you know, the one with three buttons, I have the smaller buttons. And one with two buttons has the bigger buttons. So this is another little piece that we'll, we'll glue down on here when we get it done. But uh, let's see what do I have on here. Try to... A little piece of scrap there. Let me see if I can get that out of the way. So, um, yeah, I've got my thread ready. So I just had to pick out some buttons. So this one, I thought, since those are all neutral colored, really neutral colored buttons, I thought I got my little colored buttons out here. I thought maybe we could pick out some colored, maybe pinks or whatever, to put on this one. I noticed I had some pink buttons in this jar. So I just thought, well, let's do some pink buttons. That would be neat. So here's three. These look like they're all the same. Uh, do I have any different? Here's a little bit of a different one. I kind of do like mixing up the buttons. You know, they don't have to be all the same. They can be, but let's try to replace that one with a different one. I kind of like the same on this one, though. It has the four. We could do different, you know, turn them different ways or whatever. So let's, let's try that before I drop these all over the place. <laughs> let's go with the three and see what we end up with um well actually those are three pink let me do one let me try one more thing here i just noticed i have some yellow buttons in here too and this has a lot of yellow flowers do we want to do pink or yellow i have white thread so it doesn't matter what color the buttons are we're going to use white thread on this one just not not embroidered floss but regular thread let's see here's one more yellow let's do yellow because i also have uh let's see I have some, this is all my like like scrap <laughs> little uh, seam binding and um, embroidery floss. I thought I had some, let's see, where is it? I pulled it out already. Here it is. Some yellow. Maybe we'll add some yellow rickrack on here too. I think that would be pretty somewhere. So let's do the buttons first because that's, that's what we're doing. I've got, I already threaded a needle here, so I wouldn't have to do that on camera. So let's see. Because it was so quick with the embroidery floss, I thought, well, it was so quick, I can just do one on camera, right? But this time I am using thread, so I'll have to do it a little, you know, put a little bit more, um, put a little bit more thread through, uh, you know, maybe twice instead of just one time. Let's see how quick we can do it. I'm going to do a cross on this one. Like, not a cross, but an X. And this one won't show up so much because I'm not doing the white buttons with, or, or light color neutral buttons with, uh, with colored thread. I'm doing a colored button with white thread. So I'm going to have to show you this up close when, when I'm done stitching it. But I think it still will look neat with the yellow buttons. I just wanted to try some colored buttons this time. I think it's really fun to uh, do these little challenges and then put your own take on it and kind of just do things. You know, it's fun to see everybody doing something their way and different ways. You know what I mean? Like... Not just all neutral buttons, some colored buttons, and just all kinds of, you know, what else can you stitch onto the tag with the buttons type of thing. Okay, I went through each hole at least twice there, so let's do another one. And you just keep going. You don't, like, end it at one button, so that makes it go a little faster. So that one was a cross. Let's see if I can do a, or that one was an X. Let's see if I can do a cross on this one. Or you know what else I thought of is a square. Let's do a square on this one. So that to do a square, you would go, <laughs> let me see. I hadn't done a square yet, so on any of these tags, but I thought of that when I was stitching those other ones. You could actually go 
into a square or make it look like a square not necessarily so in a square because then you would maybe uh, be going through the same hole and you could possibly undo your your threads so uh, I just went across each one once now I'm going to go up and down on each one once and then I see if I need feel like I need to do it twice Oops. Gotta get it through the right hole. So, um, yeah, I noticed a lot of new people doing the, this challenge, and so that's fun. I'm trying to watch the videos, but it's <laughs> as the challenge grows, I'm finding it hard to keep up with everyone's videos. But I do like getting um, new ideas from everyone, it's really fun. So I went through that one twice. That's the top one. I'm going to do the top one now. Oh, um, there we go. I feel like it's really getting stitched on with just two times through each, with each stitch, you know. So now up and down. I went across twice. Now if I can get it back in the proper hole, I will do the up and down twice. One, one more time. Okay, one more. See, it's pretty quick, right, uh, for this one, unless you're doing uh, tons of buttons on your stitched piece. You know, you can you can do this one pretty quick. Okay, so that looks nice. So this one was the X. This one is the square. So maybe we'll do a cross with this one. We'll see if I can manage that with... How did I do that? Okay, yeah, I, I turned it... I turned it, uh, well, the, but the buttons are different. Wait a minute. How did I do that? Let me look over here for a second. Okay, I see. I see how I did it. <laughs> that was a little confusing because the holes, the holes look different on this button for some reason. I think they're, they're closer together, so it might not look so much like a cross as the one with the, the holes a little bit farther apart, but we'll see. We'll go for it. I think it will once I get it pinned down here. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean. So I'm going into the middle piece right now. I'm going to go ahead and just do that twice. And get that done. And then I'll go to the top, from top to bottom. Okay, so that was, that was a quick, you know, twice through the middle. Across, you know, that way. And now I'm going to go twice from top to bottom see it's pretty quick right oh, I like this one <laughs> it's a little bit quicker the last couple of weeks have taken me like an hour hour and a half or whatever so uh, you know not that I mind the slow the slower ones because or the ones that take longer because you know might be learning something new okay so there we go uh, let me tie it off and then I will show you so I'm just tying it off in the back by making little knots or a knot through the threads that I have been using here. So just kind of, just kind of go through in case you never did this before. Um, and don't get your threads tangled up. And then you go through your little loop like you're making a knot. And you can do that twice if you feel like you don't have a good knot. Uh, sometimes I do it, uh, one time I did it once on the other tags and then the other two times I did it twice, so it just depends on how you feel like your knot is. And so, yeah, this time I'm doing it twice because I just have a thin, you know, thin thread here. So then I just cut it off here in the back. Did I get it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to show you, even though this is white thread. And so uh, let me hold it up close to the camera. So here this one is the one we did a crop a um, X so I went like that XX from hole to hole like that and I know it's hard to see it's hard for me to see in person so I'm sort of sure it's hard to, for you to see in the camera this one I did a square so I sewed across and across twice like that see the holes across and across twice and then that way twice so technically I made a square technically I made an X and then this one I sewed this way across and then up 
you know, from top to bottom. So that way I made a cross. So X square and cross. <laughs> I know. It's fun though, right? Simple but fun. A little is something a little different to think about the way you're, you know, putting your buttons and the way you're sewing your threads. Oh, let me let me try. Oh, I was gonna put Rick Rack on here. I'm gonna glue the Rick Rack on too. I'm not sewing the Rick Rack on. If I was, um, you know, I, I would sew it on a sewing machine if this was a tag where I wasn't putting fabric on here. But since I'm gonna just glue this piece onto the tag, I'm not going to sew the Rick Rack on. So I don't wanna get glue everywhere. I've been uh, kind of smoothing this glue out so it doesn't show through this sheet, uh, the fabric that I'm putting on here. You know, like streams or bumps and lumps. So just something like this. Make sure it covers the whole tag. Let me get this glue off my fingers for a second. I don't get glue all over the front here. But then I've just been kind of Pushing it down like this, getting the edges down, and it's been working quite well. So I'm going to leave the lid off of there for a second. This I might do another bit, one off camera and use my pink buttons. I think that would be fun too. So let's go ahead and add the Rick Rack over here on this side. I think I do want to do that just for the heck of it. <laughs> see what it looks like something you know and it matches the buttons so why not so I'm going to use my fabric tack for this too I think I will put it on the Rick Rack so I don't get it everywhere as far as on the fabric where I don't need it you know I don't want this to show because of the, t the fabric tack does to me it seems like it gets a little shiny if it shows so this way it won't show so I'm just going to put it right over here to the side, tap that down so it can all glue down. And then I've been just taking my little hole punch and I just am punching a hole right through where I want a hole and it goes through the sheet a little bit but it's been going right through the sheet and the tag like that. Now let me see if I have some matching I didn't really prepare anything for the top, but uh, let's see what I have here. I don't want to use, uh, I have pink. Why oh, do I have some green? Oh, I did have a piece of green here. That would probably look good with the yellow. This little piece of uh, some kind of like seam binding type stuff. So let me go ahead and cut this little, oh, there's an angle there already. There's an angle on both ends already. Let's see how this looks. I think the green and yellow would look good together too. So why not? Let me see if I can get it through there. Okay. There we go. I don't know if I like that color on there. I might look for a different color to put on there because this green right here is kind of a mint green and I don't think I really like that color but down there and I don't have any well you know what I could do here I'll show you what I'm gonna do yeah why didn't I think of that that I will be saved for something else but I'm just gonna take a piece of my sheet right here and use that that's what I did on uh, this one here I used a piece of the sheet for the topper so that's what I'll do on this one too and I really like that. I really like the sheet. I really like these vintage sheets. I've got them in my shop now <laughs> because I've found so many recently. I did a little bundle for my shop. And so it's in there if you need any. But um, yeah, I've been crafting with them. And they're just really so pretty. And everything you do with them just turns out, I think, beautiful. So yeah, I've been trying to find, not trying to find, but just had all these ideas of things I wanted to do. I'm making a journal cover with one and now I'm doing this. I want to make some paper clips, toppers, you know, that would be pretty. So yeah, just all kinds of things. So let me get a piece long enough here. 
Let's see, I wanna make sure that one was, I'm trying to think if I cut, the, I had any extra. I don't think I did, so I wanna just make sure this is long enough. I think I just cut it long enough. I got an angle there, let me cut a little angle here. It makes it a little easier to get it through the hole too if I have a little point on the end already. So let me see if I can get these little points through the end here. And I think my time is just about up. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, finish this up right here and show you this one. And that'll be it for this week. <clears throat> so and I have my playlist listed below this if you wanna see the rest, but that does look a lot better, doesn't it? With a little uh, sheet that matches <laughs> the on the topper there. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And there's my four little button tags and uh, I like them. I love them a lot. I thought it was fun. Thank you to Ann for this challenge this week. And I'll see you all next time. Happy crafting.